Hi, so in this video we're going to look at question 4 from the Step 1 Mathematics paper from 2018. I'll make a playlist of uh, all of the questions in this paper, so hopefully that'll be useful for you. Please do uh, like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're finding them useful, um, and we'll get on with it. So here uh, is a question that's really about applying differentiation and integration fairly rigorously, um, but as ever with Step, it's done in a difficult way and you really have to interpret what you're doing towards the end. So we start with this function that we're given in the question and it says that show that when log x squared is 1 both f of x equals 0 and the derivative of uh, f is 0. So I think uh, the first thing that occurs to me here is just to think about what this means for log x squared to be 1. So that will mean that um, either log of x is plus or minus 1, uh, so that means then that x is either e to the 1 or e to the minus 1, so that's either e uh, or 1 divided by e. Okay, So actually showing that f of x is 0 isn't just as simple as saying okay this bracket is 0, we also want to notice that the denominator here is not 0, okay so x times log x is not 0, 1 minus log x squared is 0, so I get that f of x equals 0, of course you should write an argument out to that effect, I'm not writing it down here. Now to show that f prime of x equals 0, I obviously have to uh, differentiate the function, so a lot of step questions we really do have, just have to go through uh, the rigor here, so I'm going to apply the quotient rule here with uh, u uh, so you know the quotient rule in the form that if I differentiate u over v, I get v u uh, minus I'm sorry v u dash minus u v dash over v squared. So if I take a u to be one minus log x squared uh, squared, then I apply the chain rule uh, to get two minus two times one minus log x squared, and then I've got to multiply by the derivative of this inside function, so that's minus 2 times log x, and then again by the chain we'll multiply by the derivative of log x, which is 1 over x, so if I just write that a little more simply here, uh, we're going to get uh, minus 4 times log x times 1 minus log x squared squared, all divided by x, so a bit annoying, but should be able to do it reasonably quickly if you're practiced at these methods and obviously v is equal to x times log x so the derivative here applying the product rule is just uh, 1 times log x plus x times 1 over x which is just 1 so we get that uh, f prime of x then the derivative that we're working out um, I just have to write all this stuff down now so v times u dashed, uh, let's write this a bit more so <laughs> you can hopefully you can see what I'm doing by just tidying that up a little bit as I'm going along so that's v times u dashed minus u times v dashed so uh, 1 minus log x squared squared times 1 plus log x all divided by uh, v squared which is just x log x squared and again um, you know we know that when log x is 1 of course 1 minus log x squared squared is 0 that appears in both of these terms and also x log x is not equal to 0 which is again the denominator so we do have that uh, f prime of x equals 0 so actually quite a lot of work here um, you know, we haven't even got to, to part one, uh, so you know, we do have to just be rigorous in what we're doing there. Now, um, we're then shown this cap function capital F uh, defined uh, in this piecewise definition. Okay, so I have um, you know, the two parts of the function here, one uh, defined for zero to one and one for x bigger than one, fundamentally involving the same integral of this function. Um, so we have to find uh, a capital F of X uh, explicitly in, in the next part, okay, so 
Uh, so let's uh, let's do that. Um, so that really just means uh, doing the integral. So, I'll, so because both the integrals are the same, I'm going to forget the limits just for a second and see if we can just deal with the problem of working out the integral of f of t with respect to t. Um, so, you know, I'm just trying to integrate that function that we were looking at before. Okay, we're writing t now for correctness with the notation. Um, so 1 over t log t, 1 minus log t squared squared dt. And it looks like we're going to want to apply a substitution here. Various things you could try to substitute, like log t squared or this whole factor. But actually, you know, tried simpler substitutions first. So I think, uh, also I know that log t differentiates to 1 over t, and I've got this 1 over t here. So, so let's try substituting u equals log t. So du by dt uh, then is 1 over t. And if you like in that um, slight abusive notation that we allow ourselves in substitution, dt is equal to t times uh, du. So this integral becomes uh, 1 over, um, OK, I'm going to leave this t because I can see it's going to cancel, times u. Uh, and then 1 minus u squared squared, and then I've got my t du from the substitution. So I'm going to cancel these t's, and now I've got something that's nicely just an integral uh, to do with u. So, uh, again, in, nothing in step is ever totally straightforward, uh, but this one isn't too bad. You know, if you multiply out 1 minus u squared squared, we just get 1 minus 2u squared plus u to the 4, and it's all divided by u. So uh, I've just got u to the minus 1 minus 2u plus u cubed, and this is an integral that uh, we can just do. Okay, So um, integral of 1 over u is going to be log of mod u. And if I don't know what the limits are at the moment, it's important that I keep the modulus in, uh, minus 2u squared over 2, so this is just minus u squared, and then plus 1 quarter u to the power of 4. Uh, and if I was really doing this as an indefinite integral, I'd have plus a constant. But of course, in this question, what I really want to do is to include the, the limits as well, right? So actually, what I wanted was for the first part, for x is between 0 and 1, I want to do the integral of uh, this function between 1 over e and uh, and x, right? So, uh, so I'm going to substitute. I'm going to take this function here, um, and I suppose actually maybe uh, I think the way I'd rather do this is to rewrite this. Um, no, let's leave it. Let's leave it in terms of t. So, in terms of u. Sorry. So I, I was thinking of rewriting. Uh, um, this back in here, but actually, okay. So if my uh, if my t limits are one over e and x, and my substitution was u equals log t, I need to do a log of one over e, which is minus one as my as my bottom uh, limit. Okay, and log u as the so log x as the that's the upper limit. Okay, so uh, I'm going to get log of modulus of log of x minus log of x squared plus one quarter times log of x to the power of four, uh, and then I subtract the numerical bit, so minus log of the modulus of minus one um, minus uh, minus one squared, so that's just one, and then plus a quarter here, so uh, I get log of log x minus log x squared plus a quarter log x to the four, log of minus one is zero, so I've got minus minus one plus a quarter, so that just gives me uh, plus three quarters, right? Um, and now the thing that you notice is if you do the integral between e and x of the same thing, okay, when I'm changing my 
uh, limits here, also log of e is 1, so I'm going to be doing exactly the same thing between 1 and log of x. And when I substitute in 1 or minus 1 here, it doesn't make any difference because I've taken the modulus here and I've squared them and I take the power 4. So I'm not going to write this all out again. You can see you just get exactly, exactly the same thing here uh, in, in both cases. Right. So, uh, so, so we get the same functional form uh, regardless of the value of x. Of course, the only point it doesn't hold out is x equals 1. That's not included in the definition. It's 0 to 1 and larger than 1, all strict inequalities. But it then says show f of x to the minus 1 equals f of x. So, so remember, this is my uh, function f of x. So if I do f of x to the minus 1, that's just log of uh, log of x to the minus 1 minus log of x to the minus 1 squared plus 1 quarter log x to the minus 1 to the power of 4. But we know that log of x to the minus 1 by the rules of logs is just minus log x. Right, so actually this is, I can just pull this minus out um, <coughs> uh, and so uh, I've got to be careful here, minus, uh, minus log x all squared and then plus a quarter of minus log x to the power of 4 and again because of the the square and the power of 4 and the modulus actually uh, I just get back to uh, the same thing without the minuses so I do just get back to capital F of x okay and again I think you might want to write that out a little bit more neatly than I have there but hopefully the point is clear right so um, so that's that and then in part two uh, it gives us a rather daunting task of now sketching the curve y equals f of x and um, this is where you know step looks really different from a level exams and as much as possible I think we want to be considering uh, not just the functional form that we've worked out right there was log of let me write that again, log of log of x minus log of x squared plus one quarter log of x to the four plus three quarters. But also thinking back to some of the things that we've shown in the question, particularly at the beginning where we showed that um, f of x was zero and f prime of x was zero when uh, log of x squared was one. Because in some sense, this small f of x is kind of like a derivative for capital F of x. And you know, that's quite standard notation. Um, and okay, we've got this discontinuity at one, but you know, apart from that, it's a derivative. So actually, what that initial statement is saying that that says that log of x uh, squared is one and it gives f of x equals zero, right? I mean, so that means that when x equals e or one over e, uh, the derivative is zero. So we have a stationary point. And further, we also know that f prime of x is zero. So actually, the the second derivative is zero as well. Which, doesn't necessarily mean we've got an inflection, um, but uh, but makes that, but that is a possibility. Uh, so, other thing we can see here is that uh, we've got to think about this special point, right? When x equals one, something strange is happening here. It's not defined at one, so I might want to think what's happening around uh, around x equals one. Uh, so, log of one is zero. So I I get so this term will become log of zero and you know the graph of log okay it's not defined at zero but it's it's tending to minus infinity uh tending to minus infinity at zero okay so actually obviously i'm gonna have this asymptote here and the graph is going to be coming down towards minus infinity uh, on either side of this um now actually also i suppose if i thought about what happens close to x equals zero uh, log of uh, so I've got log of um, log of zero again so I've got something sort of minus infinity ish looking there um, uh, but actually no log of log of something close to so if log of x uh, is very large and negative actually the modulus of it is going to be positive so actually log of that is then going to be very large and positive 
Um, and then I've also got these things that are like log of x squared so and log of x to the 4, they're also going to be large and positive, so it looks like it's going to go up to, to plus infinity over here. And similarly, when x gets large, uh, the dominant term is going to be uh, what well, I've got. Certainly, log of x to the 4 is going to dominate the log of x squared, so I've got something large and positive again. This is also an extra large and positive. Uh, term at that point, so it's going to go up off to plus infinity over this side somewhere. And I've got this extra information that at 1 over e and e, uh, the graph has a turning point. And actually, also, if we put in uh, e and 1 over e into here, uh, so we get um, log of either 1 or minus 1, which is 0. And then I get uh, a minus one plus a quarter plus three quarters. Actually, it's it's the f of x capital F of x itself is zero at this point. So it has these turning points here and here. Um, so if these are the only turning points of of this graph, and it goes from plus infinity to minus infinity. Then it must be that this graph looks something like this. And actually, we do have an inflection here. Although as I said, the second derivative being zero doesn't necessarily mean it was an inflection. Uh, and uh, similarly. Same conclusion here, I've got an inflection uh, at E, and my graph is going to look something like this. So, uh, again, you know, a tough graph to draw there, but if you apply the usual sort of techniques, looking at interesting points on the graph, looking at behavior around those interesting points and at the extremities, use the hints that were given in the question, it's possible to come to this conclusion without you know, any additional sort of algebraic working here. We're not trying to... Um, to do anything too complicated, trying to just use the information we've got uh, in the best possible way. So I hope that was useful. I'm going to keep working through this paper, and I will put out a few more videos on the questions that I do as soon as I do. So please do like and subscribe, uh, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, there's also an Amazon store uh, linked below with lots of interesting stuff for uh, to help with the transition between A level and university maths calculators, other interesting books. Uh, for reading around to so have a look at those and let me know uh, if you find them interesting.